Oh, there once was a hero named Lucian Flavius, whose singing and writing and looks were just marvellous. Hi, I'm Joseph Russell, a full-time engineering student and part-time writer, but I'm probably best known as the creator and voice of Lucian, the custom-voiced follower mod for The Elder Scrolls V Skyrim. So, a little while ago, Piggy Saurus from the Skyrim Nexus got in touch with me and asked if I'd like to do an interview, which, of course I would. But being the unrepentant tryhard that I am, I thought I'd do that as a video. So, sit back, pour yourself a tall glass of Nord Mead, or milk, and enjoy! Hi Joseph, thank you for taking the time out of your day to speak to me, and a special thank you for putting together this video version of the interview. Hi Picky, it's a pleasure to be here, thanks so much for having me on! So, as a fellow gamer, if you had to pick your absolute favourite game of all time, yeah. what would it be okay, and why? Okay. okay, the game that means the most to me, personally, that I think is therefore my favourite, is Croc Legend of the Godos, right? Because it's this really old platformer from 1997, I think, uh, on the PC, and lots of people hate it for lots of reasons, mainly the control scheme, but it is just great because the music is amazing and the whole thing has this great sense of whimsy and adventure and it has all these hidden secrets to find and it's just a great game. It's the first game I ever played and it's the one I always keep coming back to if I ever want to sort of just um, relax and have fun playing games. You know, it's great. I mean, obviously there's also there's things like Skyrim, for instance, which is probably the game I've played the most over the years because, you know, it's basically an infinite amount of content but with modding and everything um, and now making content for it. Um, so it's definitely one of those two, really, but I think Croc has my heart. So now let's talk about your mods. Uh, there might be some modders in the Skyrim community who've yet to meet Lucian. What can you tell us about him? So there's a lot I could tell you about Lucian, but I think there's a much better person to answer that question. So I'll just let my friend take it from here. Hello there. My name is Lucian Flavius. It's an absolute pleasure to do this interview. As I so often seem to say, I'm a scientist, philosopher, amateur wizard, and something of a musician. Though I suppose that's more of a hobby. I'm here in Skyrim on an academic expedition, and I'm in need of someone a little tougher than me to show me around and make sure I don't die. I'll pay you handsomely for the job, and if you're willing to train me, I'll do my best to help you out in battle however I can. I'll also sing to you, read to you, and comment on hundreds of different situations in Skyrim, including content from other mods. Ah, did I mention mods? Oops, there goes the fourth wall. Well, anyway, if you fancy giving me a go, hop onto the Nexus, Steam, or Bethesda.net and download me. What have you got to lose? Right then, back to you, Joseph. Is the character of Lucian inspired by the character you play in Skyrim, or does the inspiration come from somewhere else? So, the inspiration for Lucian, uh, there's a lot of me in there, really. He is very much how I think I might react to being thrown into the situations that Skyrim presents to you. So, he's a bit of a wuss, he's very academic, um, he, he will much more readily run from a fight than confront it. Um, he likes singing, he likes bad jokes. Um, he, he, the voice I use for him is basically mine, but maybe slightly posher, just a little bit posher. But I, I really don't change it a lot because I had to do that uh, because I find when you're recording thousands of lines of dialogue for a character, it's really got to be something you can easily just jump into. You know, if I tried to put on a voice for that, that might work for a couple of hundred lines, but when you're doing that for so much time, it becomes really difficult. So by being such a natural voice for me, it's really easy. I mean, I know Gary Hesketh, who does Inigo, um, does this complete vocal transformation for the character, and he's done that for literally 7,000 lines, and I have no idea how he manages to cope with that. I don't have that talent. So yeah, a lot of Lucian just comes from me, and also kind of what I think might be funny, I thought it would be interesting because so many of the characters in Skyrim are these big, strong barbarians, you know, these all these fighters or assassins, you know, they're all really serious people who are there to, um, you know, to win fights and be heroes of Skyrim. So I thought just to have an ordinary bloke who isn't really good at anything there, um, just to see how he reacts, I thought that would be a really interesting, unique character. And he sort of, as soon as I started writing him, 
uh, his character just sort of grew organically on its own, which I then tried to capture in the game, you know, with his um, personality systems and the whole way he develops as you play with him. So he sort of, these days, kind of writes himself, but I enjoy it very much. Before you released Lucian, your mods included typo fixes and patches for Bethesda's Creation Club content. What inspired you to make the jump to your own fully featured follower? Yeah, so the typo fixes and the patches were all really... I made them for me because uh, as someone who does a lot of writing, I have a sensitive eye for grammar and spelling mistakes. You know, if, if I spot something and my eye goes straight to it, I really notice it and that really takes me out of the immersion in the game. So I started with these writing patches because a lot of incredibly talented modders who make these amazing mods, um, often English isn't their first language or they're not, you know, they're not trained writers, then they're, they're um, they come from all walks of life, but sometimes it's easy for anyone really to leave typos in there. So I, I thought, um, for my own personal enjoyment, I just go in and fix the mistakes that I see as they come up. And then the um, the creation club patches, which were much later on, um, were sort of taking that a little bit further. You know, again, it's all it's this idea of polishing the content that's already there, just to make it to me that bit more professional, just to make it that bit better. Um, but uh, yeah, so doing that sort of thing, while satisfying for me, very, yeah, I, it's enjoyable to do, but the actual work is, is not fun. You know, actually, actually going in there with, um, well, I use uh, XEdit to do a lot of it, and it's, it's opening up thousands upon thousands of records and checking them over and then changing them. I'm not, there's no creativity that goes into that. So I found that it, it can be a drag doing that kind of work. So I find it so much more rewarding personally to actually create content. So all the time while I was doing that, that patching, I was getting a feel for how to use the creation kit, how to use Xedit, how to do modding, picking up all the skills I needed. So then I found when I came to doing, wanting to do something more or a bigger mod that was my own work, um, I was already familiar with where all the buttons are and how to achieve the various things that I needed. Um, so then I was thinking, you know, what, what should I do? What, what character could I create uh, to add to it? And a follower mod is great for a writer because it's a lot less involved than making like a quest mod or a dungeon. And there are quests and dungeons in Lucian, but the idea is made predominantly it's writing because you have to make the character and you have to learn how to sort of set up the conditions and things for the dialogue. But mostly it's just writing hundreds and hundreds of lines and I can voice them all myself. So I don't need to collaborate very much with other people. Um, so it's, it's a really good fit for me. Um, so yeah, I thought follow a mod was a great place for me to start and I found it somewhere I want to stay, you know, it's, it's really, really fun and rewarding to just keep making him bigger and better all the time. Lucien has numerous interactions with other mods, including other followers. How did you choose each mod to add support for? Um, so yeah, apart from Inigo, I wanted to use, just start out trying to use the mods that I like to use, you know, that I think it would be fun for Lucien to interact with. Um, what was previously called Song of the Green, uh, featuring Ori, that is now Song of the Green, Ori Follower, uh, by Warabiki. Um, that is a, a wood elf who is so completely different to Lucian uh, in that she has no inhibitions <laughs> and is um, just a really lovely counterpoint to Lucian's character. So I thought that would be a really fun one to interact with. So the dialogue between them, I think, bounces off really nicely, the way they just don't get each other at all. Um, and then, so yes, so I have this framework that allows me to easily put, do interactions with other followers. That's easy technically to do. To do quest mods, on the other hand, that requires a patch. So I have to be careful there, you know, because you don't want people to have to download more files than, than absolutely necessary, you know, because you want to keep that installation process as easy and straightforward as possible. So um, if I am going to have to use a patch, I want to really get value out of having that patch with a lot of lines. Then want it to be just one or two throwaway things. Um, so Moonpath to Elsewhere, which I think was the first, and I may well be wrong, but I think was one of the first quest mods for Skyrim that allows you to go to an entirely different country. These days, it's quite small compared to a lot of other quest mods, but that was one of the first mods I ever downloaded. So I had to have some kind of interaction with that. And I think it's a really nice story that's different to Skyrim. It's a different environment, so it's great to see how Lucian, as an academic and a scholar, reacts to being placed in that completely different country. And then it was a great way of getting a lot of extra lore into it as well, to have his various comments and all the unusual things that you might find in elsewhere. So that's a great one. So generally, 
It's based on what I think is fun. It helps if I already know the mod myself, if I already know the story, because that means I don't have to research it. Uh, and if it's easy to implement, you know, some there are a lot of mods that would be great to do interactions with, but for various technical reasons are difficult to pull off. As you're also the voice actor for Lucian, do you have any tips for budding voice actors to get that perfect recording? Okay. Um, uh, I'm not hugely experienced in the world of voice acting beyond this role, but what I can say um, with any kind of acting, but especially with voice acting, is that you can't just read the lines out, right? You really, you are acting that character. Um, so it's really important to put as much variation in tone um, and emotion into the sentences as you possibly can. And the thing with voice acting as well is a lot of our interaction um, Face to face is all done with facial expression and with your eyes, lots of things that you can see. And when you're voice acting, you have all that element of communication taken away. You only have your voice. So everything needs to be turned up to about 150%. I don't know. You need to, you need to really amp up all the emotion to the extent that it sounds over the top to you. Because if it sounds over the top when you're saying it, when you actually listen back, I find um, it's usually just about spot on. You know, you can never really do too much. What hardware and software do you use when working on your mods? So the best place to talk about hardware and software is here, my university accommodation where I currently do all my recording. So I use a Focusrite Scarlett Studio solo pack, which comes with this microphone. It's really nice quality, produces a really lovely sound. I can definitely recommend it. It also comes with this, which is the amplifier unit. It's got lots of lovely dials on the front that generally I don't touch, but like the microphone, it's a very fetching shade of red. Other bits and bobs I use that are very important are this, the pop filter. Now the pop filter works with the sponge cover in order to mask those t and p sounds, right? Because when they come through in the microphone without the pop filter, that produces a really obnoxious popping sound. You really don't want that, so it's so important to get one of these. Trouble, though, with that is that when it masks the sound, the vibration of that t passes down the arm of the pop filter and into the mic stand itself, which will then be picked up on the microphone as a sort of humming sound. You really don't want that. That doesn't sound very good. I mean, you can live with it, but in order to have that really nice quality sound, I'd suggest investing in one of these. This is a shock mount, right? And that has these various bands holding the microphone in place and that dampens the vibration of the pop filter to producing a really nice clean sound with none of that humming. Software wise, I do most of my recording in Cubase, which is the software that comes with the Focusrite Scarlett Studio solo pack. And then a little bit of tweaking in Audacity. For modding, I do all my creative work, funnily enough, in the creation kit. And then for fine tuning and bug fixing, where I need the scalpel rather than the sledgehammer, I use Xedit. It must have taken a lot of work to get Lucian to where he is today. How many hours would you say you've put into the development of the mod? Oh, blimey, that is a difficult question. Um, many, many hours? I don't exactly keep track. I started work on him uh, September two years ago. So it was about a year of work as a hobby before it actually got to release. Um, and now it's been out for about a year again. Um, so the amount of time I have to work on him varies because as a pretty much full-time student, I don't have a lot of free time. Um, but so I, yeah, it, it varies depending on term time and things. Um, it must be thousands of hours, but it's impossible to really put a figure on it. A lot, a lot. <laughs> That about wraps up this interview, so thank you again for taking the time to talk to me, and I'll leave you to wrap up this video. So, there we have it, my first interview on the internet. Thanks so much to everyone at the Skyrim Nexus for asking me to do it, and in particular Pikisaurus for humouring my nonsense and letting me use his voice. Now, usual end of the video prattle. If you enjoyed this interview, please do go ahead and click that like button, and if for some unfathomable reason you want to see more of me, heaven forbid, then feel free to subscribe to this channel, follow me on Facebook, or if you're feeling extra generous, please do consider checking out my Patreon. Thanks so much for watching, hopefully see you again soon!